Okay guys, I'm back. We have had a busy day. So I'm not sure where my train of thought was before about decluttering and where and what I've gone through personally with it. I guess it's all to kind of sum up and say, when you are in this community and you are collecting or building a collection, whether you find the joy in using up your products completely and making empty videos, or whether you just enjoy watching the content, or whether you enjoy just that purchase aspect of purchasing and then building a collection, it is something that it is, you know, a cycle, guys. You can shop and shop and shop and shop and shop and use as much as you can and enjoy the products that you can, but there's always going to be something new coming out. When I sit back and over, you know, my whole experience during maturing and, and the life of the brand in general, when I sit back and I look at how much I have purchased from the brand, used from the brand, I know now, and then also my experience of working for the brand, I know what I gravitate towards, what I'm interested in, and I am starting to learn finally of purchases that I make that may purely just be to do a review for or may purely be because it's something that I love and I enjoy and I'm interested in. There is a big difference between the two. You'll find a lot of content creators here in the community who there is a fine line and it gets difficult, guys. I mean, we're all gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be as honest as I can now that I no longer work for the brand. It is difficult one, you would love to talk more about the negative aspects or the negative issues with the brand. You may find a lot of comments that are completely honest about issues with the brand, but if you work for the brand, you have been instilled with this I don't know what the right word is, guys. I don't have the largest vocabulary, I'm sorry. You've kind of been put in this situation where you don't wanna talk negatively about the brand because you don't want it to jeopardize your position or your job with the brand. You also don't want to talk negatively for the potential of other outside brands seeing you talk negatively there is that potential then that they won't be interested in working with you for their specific brand. That gets me to the conversation that I wanna have with you guys about PR. So you guys have seen over the course of my channel, I have accepted PR from brands. I have accepted PR from Anna Luisa, from Portland Leather Goods, from Fitu, um, from Chic Soul, from X Plus Wear, from Kutri Sports. You've seen me accept and do some videos concerning PR. Now, I will be completely honest with you guys. One, have I ever made any money with sponsored videos or anything like that. No, I have not made one cent. I haven't made one penny off of YouTube, Instagram, or any sponsored content. I haven't made one cent. Have I been sent free items? Yes, I have. If I have done a sponsored or a PR video, I try to always disclose, and I, I have, I think on every single one where I've gotten something for free, I've disclosed that they did send it to me, um, either in PR or as a gift. So I've gone ahead and I've talked about all of that. Uh, legally, you have to, or at least you're supposed to. How many brands out there and how many videos do you guys see and watch where you suddenly see this product in all of the content creators? and none of them that you watch are talking about how it was gifted. Um, that's where you should go down and you should look in their hashtags and see if you see the word ad, gifted, collaboration, something like that. 
but they are supposed to disclose it. I am such a small, tiny channel, guys, that it it's not something that I want to kind of mess around with, to be honest. I don't want to mess around with getting in trouble with any of the laws concerning sponsored posts. So is it technically sponsored? It's, it's sponsored if they paid you. YouTube has some interesting language for creators on what you are or not supposed to do. On my reels, I still have the, or my sh YouTube shorts, I still have the ability and the option to do like a paid promotion label. So if it's been gifted, I use that. When I am editing for like full long form videos, for some reason that option isn't there on my mobile phone anymore. I edit, film, and do everything on my iPhone. Um, I don't have like a laptop computer so I can go in and use that form that they have of, you know, like YouTube creators and, you know, all of their different apps and stuff that they can do. So for some reason, that's why you guys don't see the label above my long form videos that said, you know, like paid promotion. Um, anything that I have done for or with a, you know, video where they've gone ahead and they've sent me PR. It's always been companies that I've been interested in, except for one. There was one company that I was just like, hmm, I don't know, we'll see. Um, I have turned down a lot of PR for a lot of companies that go completely far left of what even makes sense on my channel. Um, I did just recently get accepted into the Slack Can & Co um, ambassador program. So you guys may have seen that recently in my community tab or on Instagram or anything. Um, one thing that I have noticed, now I was not familiar with the ambassador program before for Slack Can & Co at all. I wasn't familiar with it at all. But um, very quickly, like within not even a day after being accepted, I started to see some very interesting things with their ambassador program. I'm not going to go too far into it because I'm waiting for email responses back concerning some of the issues that I saw. Um, we'll see what happens, guys. We'll see what their emails are and, and things like that. Um, one of the things with no longer being an employee with Bath and Body Works, it does give me the freedom and the ability to talk way more openly with you guys and to talk more openly about other interests that I have. So, Victoria's Secret. When I first started my channel, it was right around, it was like, you know, like eight, nine months ago, guys. So it was, you know, fairly around the time where Bath and Body Works and Victoria's Secret split and were no longer under the same like umbrella branch, whatever. So it was really being kind of implied lightly, you know, that you wanted to be brand loyal to the brand you were working for. So you guys didn't see me purchase and review a lot of Victoria's Secret. I think during the time I went ahead and I got the frosted frost melt or something like that, that mint chocolate scent from Victoria's Secret, because I was desperately interested in that one. Um, and I purchased that, I showed that like in you know, like a tiny haul, but for the most part, you know, you're really encouraged to just be brand loyal. How brand loyal are we in everyday life? Are all of your cosmetics from one company? No, you buy cosmetics from multiple different companies, guys. I mean, like my my tower of my whole collection, there's drugstore, there's high-end, there's mid-range brands. You know, with your fragrance, am I pretty brand loyal with Bath & Body Works? Yes, because of the fact that one, I don't have a Target, so I don't have, um, you know, like a store that I can go into a Target 
and look at some of the other brands that they have that are kind of comparable body mist wise. So I haven't dabbled into Finery and some of the other, you know, like brands that they sell at Target. Um, I don't have a Target near me. It, I hate it, but you know, I don't have one. So when it comes to, you know, like bath products like this, Bath and Body Works is the store that we have. Um, that's the same when it comes to my personal buying of candles. Now we have a TJ Maxx, we have a Ross, we have a Burlington. Do I go out and buy candles all the time? No, I mean, I do occasionally, but it's more like seasonal. And I would buy the rest of my candles during candle day at Bath and Body Works, or seasonally, I would buy one, two, three candles. You guys know my preference is body care. Now that I do not have to be completely brand loyal, I would love to start doing more videos for you on candles from other brands. So I was really excited when I got accepted into the ambassador program for Slatkin & Co. As I said, you know, I'm going to kind of keep that on the back burner until I learn and hear more things um, concerning their program. And I'm just waiting and we'll find out then. Um, but I've been really interested in Goose Creek Candles. Um, their Memorial Day sale was amazing. And I really, really wanted to participate, guys. But everything right now, um, there's just a lot going on. And the little bit of, you know, like play money we might have, that is going to be going to SAS for some of the things that I want during SAS. So I didn't participate in any of the Memorial Day candle sales. Did I want to? Oh my gosh, Goose Creek had the best Memorial Day candle sales, like the best. Um, now, that gets me on another little interesting topic. So in our community where we live, we have one or two of the candle factories that are near us. And guys, in that factory, they actually make the candles that you guys purchase. So I would love eventually to see if they do tours. I don't think that they do. One of the candle factories may not be working anymore. I don't remember. We had some tornadoes a couple of years ago that devastated, devastated a lot of the, the candle factories. But anywho, moving on. Um, I don't know, this video guys has mostly been me rambling about some thoughts that maybe you guys have already seen from me. I guess to sum it up the best that I can, am I always going to be purchasing things from Bath and Body Works? Right now, yes. Is it a hobby? Yes, it's a hobby. It is something that I enjoy doing that is a break from what my job is as a caregiver and I get to focus on something else that I'm really passionate about and that I enjoy and I love. But when I first really, really started building a collection, maybe about three, four years ago, it was something where it's purely just the joy of it. The joy, the fun, the sense, seeing the packaging, it's something uplifting. And I love that. And the community, the people, the content that I watch, I love it. I absolutely love it. When we see content creators start to declutter the collections and the products on any community on YouTube, guys, in general, we sit back and there's a part of us that feels pained almost. And you're like, but you're the one that convinced me to buy this, whether it's in the makeup community, the purse community, the cosmetic community, the hygiene community. You're like, but you're the one that, that 
encouraged me to buy this and now you're just getting rid of it. I don't understand that video was only like, you know, maybe two, three weeks ago and I finally purchased it. And now, you know, a month, two months later, you're, you're done with it already. It, there's no way that I can go through all of these bottles and do something really with. There was a time where my collection, I think was, you know, like maybe, you know, six, seven, eight body lotions, maybe four body creams, you know, maybe three shower gels, and then maybe like 15, 20 sprays for all the different seasons combined. You know, now I, I'm at like, you know, 30 for, you know, maybe a season. And that's still not even as much as some of the larger content creators who have started this is really becoming a business where they do, you know, like they get write-offs, everything when they do their taxes, you know, all those things. That's not where I'm at. This is just a hobby still for me, guys. Being completely honest, this is just a hobby. But it is a hobby that I have done honestly for years and it's been cultivated from many different parts and aspects of my life. So when we were in the military, I was really big into couponing and building a stockpile from couponing and I loved it. It was so much fun to go through the coupons, to go through the paper, to build up a stockpile, to have that, to not worry about those things. It was fantastic. Now, do I look sometimes at this and feel like, is it just me rebuilding a stockpile again? In some ways, because over the last eight, nine, I don't know. Okay, we'll just call it like a year. Over the last year, two years, my teenagers have pulled from new stock that I had of body washes, hand soaps, candles, things like that to give to their friends for birthday, Christmas presents, you know, like all types of things to give to their teachers. That has saved us money when maybe that week we couldn't have come up with a gift for one of their friends, but they pulled from the stock and were able to make a huge gift for their friend. That is something that my husband has seen has, you know, benefited us. I've seen has benefited us and it's helped a lot. It's helped a lot. So when you are going to like SAS and you're thinking about, you know, like what can I go ahead and buy? How many gifts might, you know, we might do or give away for, you know, this season, things like that. And the prices are two, three dollars. I mean, it, it makes sense when you're doing it like that. And is it is it girl math thinking like that? Maybe, I don't know. Let me know down below if you guys think that's just girl math. Um, I don't know, but those are my thoughts today. I know this has been kind of a little bit all over the place. It'll probably take me all night to edit this, but how do you feel when you see your favorite or you know content creator how do you feel when you see them decluttering something that they convinced you to purchase or to try it's something that because i have been on each economic part of the scale i guess i have been economically disadvantaged and i have been blessed when you sit back and you've experienced both sides of the spectrum, I don't want to encourage the FOMO that I have felt myself. I want to be very mindful of using what I enjoy. And I have found lately that it is difficult to get myself to be more and more intentional with actually finishing a product. 
I am someone who, I don't have ADD, but it would almost seem like I do because I want to use a different scent sometimes multiple times a day and I just like collecting it. I just collect, I just like collecting it. But I've been that way with all the things that I love. I love purses. I buy a lot of different purses. For a while there, it was about three to four new purses a year. So once a season, I would get a new purse um, because I like switching them out multiple times. Um, and, you know, it was always justified because if I didn't like something anymore, I just went ahead and sold it. And then I would find something else that I did like. Uh, when it comes to the cosmetics, you know, I've, I've been watching YouTube since back in the day, you guys. And that's always been something that for my personality, I want to research everything I can before I purchase a product. That's how I am. Is that how you guys are? I don't know. Give me a comment down below. Let me know your guys' thought on this. How did you feel when I did my declutter? How did you feel when you found out that I put him in an archive? I would love to know, guys. Let me know down below, and guys, I will catch you in my next video. Bye, friends. They move too fast, honey. They're bitchers. Not me again.